Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Brock. I'm the editorial director at High Snobiety. We're at uh, Oakley's City of Origins in Los Angeles, celebrating the origins of the brand Oakley, but also the origins of some of the sports that have come from Southern California. So that would be like BMX, skating, surfing. And I'm here with two legends of the sport BMX, uh, Bob Haro, who practically invented the sport in the early 80s. And we're going to get into a bit about his uh, influence in the sport and everything he built up, as well as, as well as Nigel Sylvester, who's basically the face of the sport now and is carrying it into the next generation. So please, guys, give it up for Bob and Nigel. Uh, so first off, Bob, I want to start with you. Uh, tell me about the early days of the sport. I mean, you practically, as I mentioned, gave birth to the sport. You invented so many of the tricks that people are still trying to learn today. And I know you toured around the country showing people what you were doing, but I imagine because you were inventing these things, there was no real frame of reference for what people were even seeing. So yeah, tell me a bit about what those early days were like, where these ideas came from, struggles, whatever, those, those kind of things. All right, where do I start? So um, first off, nice to see everybody. Thank you for the opportunity to be here with one of my heroes here too. So, uh, you know, when I started riding, I was just like every other kid out there. I was a passionate kid with a, a passion for bikes and motorcycles and things like that. And the sport of BMX wasn't, uh, it was just kind of starting in the 70s. I was a Southern California kid. I grew up in San Diego. And um, so we had a lot of influences, you know, in San Diego for sure. The SoCal deal is, you know, BMX was popular, motorcycles were popular, skateboarding, surfing, so, and we had the weather, year-round weather that was, you know, 72 and sunny. So we're, you know, in your neighborhood with your kid, your, all your pals and stuff like that, everybody was into all of these kind of new emerging action sports. And um, at that time in the 70s, I was you know, a kid in high school and junior high. I had a BMX bike, but it was really just a Schwinn Stingray at the time. It wasn't even BMX yet. And um, down the street from my house was a skateboard park. When skateboarding took off and uh, skating was really popular, and I was, like a lot of kids, I rode skateboards and stuff like that, and I was okay at it, but I was really better on two wheels. I was better on a, on a BMX bike. So for me, the combination of having access to a skate park and a passion for riding a BMX bike was kind of the, the, you know, the tipping point for me to start doing tricks. And tricks were basically emulating what we would do on our skateboards, you know, carving pools and rolling in pools and kick turns and aerials and all of these early BMX freestyle tricks were, were basically offshoots of what we did on skateboards and stuff like that. So it wasn't until the, you know, late 70s and early 80s that BMX freestyle was coined and became popularized. And uh, in my personal career, you know, I was, a, again, an 18-year-old kid who was riding BMX bikes all the time with my crew, my, all my friends in my neighborhood. And uh, I, was also, I was also an artist. You know, I was doing cartoons and illustrations. And at that time, a BMX magazine came aboard, uh, came online, and that was BMX Action Magazine. And uh, I submitted my artwork to this magazine. It was in Los Angeles in Torrance, and uh, they liked my work, and they gave me an opportunity to do uh, artwork for the BMX magazine. So again, you're an 18-year-old kid. You like riding your BMX bike. You like drawing cartoons. You like doing illustrations. and. Long story short, I, I ended up getting a job working in this magazine, a dream job, and um, working in media. I'm doing illustrations in the daytime, riding my bike at lunch, riding my bike after work with my friends, and you know, the magazine publisher took that story and started popularizing freestyle BMX. There's a lot more to it, but that's, <laughs> yeah. And then, Nigel, tell me about your earliest memories of BMX. Like, how did you first find out about the sport? When did you get your first bike? Uh, when did you hear about Haro bikes? That kind of thing. No, of course. So, uh, growing up in Jamaica, Queens, bicycles were something all the kids had. You know, uh, you used it to get from your house to the park, uh, to the store, to your friend's house, whatever the case may be. And for me, like, in between those... That, that, that point A to point B, I would do tricks. I would jump a curb cut or I'll try to pop a willy, um, things of that nature. And 
once I started to see BMX on TV and I understood it was the entire industry around it, there were companies and magazines and professional writers, I was hooked. I was like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, and we had a major influence from things that you've created, <laughs> you know, uh, Harrow, like Harrow Bikes or something. I like, we idolized in the neighborhood, you know, like you had a Harrow, that was, that was it, you know. Um, and it's like ripple effect of like the, like the riders who rode for Harrow and the tricks you invented, man. So it's something that's been around for my entire life. And I was sold, like I said, <laughs> I had to become a professional bike rider. And when did you guys realize in your respective careers that you could actually do this for a living and it wasn't, it was more than just a hobby, basically more than just like a way of life? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I realized that it was actually a, a, a career path that I can be good at. Um, and when I was probably around the age of 15, 16 years old, I think that's when I like, got like my first like flow package. So from the first time a company actually gave me a couple of t-shirts and a sprocket, and I was like, wow, like all these years of riding my bicycle and putting work in and grinding on benches and jumping downstairs and hitting handrails, like I'm finally getting like the recognition from a brand. And once that happened, I just became way more hungry. I was like, man, I'm gonna take this as far as I possibly can. Pretty, pretty much the same as what Nigel said. I mean, when you're a kid and you know, you're self-funding your hobby, and you're pretty good at it, and all of a sudden you get recognized. And I had the same, same deal when uh, I've, someone gave me some handlebars or Oakley gave me grips back in the day, and you know, they showed up in the mail, you're like, oh my God, this is incredible. You know, you feel someone else is recognizing you, and it does fuel you. It just, it fuels that passion in you that, A, you're, you know, you're getting recognized, and other people see value in you and what you're doing and they want to be part of your ride you know so yeah that's the same thing that happened for me and tell me a bit guys about because i know you're both artists and creatives as well and in a bit of, with everything you guys do tell me a bit what that relationship is like between art and sport is it to you guys is it sort of one and the same is it just like different creative outlets for you tell me a bit about that I could say in my, as, as I mentioned to you earlier, I mean, art has always been part of who I am, even today, you know, being a designer and creative and illustrator. Um, art and BMX and what freestyle is, is, is basically, a, it's a combination of both of those, because freestyle is freestyle. It's, you know, you come up with tricks, you invent things, you invent uh, tricks and moves and, and uh, on different surfaces and combinations. And so it's really, it's it is artistic expression, you know, and doing it stylishly and doing it really smoothly. And, uh, you know, I remember you just practicing for hours on doing really basic tricks or even harder tricks and trying to make them look really easy. And, and I'm thankful to say even, you know, today, I mean, I have people say, you know, I always li liked your style of riding. You were always really smooth and stuff like that. But, you know, came from a lot of work, too. But uh, so, yeah, it was a, definitely a combination of art and sport. For sure. It was the same exact thing for me. Um, so I piggyback on, on what Bob said. Um, I feel like BMX riding, especially freestyle BMX riding, is this, is this junction of art and sport because, of course, you have to have the athleticism to go and perform and do these tricks. And sometimes it takes hours, days, months to land one trick or to, like, to perfect it and make it look good. So like when you present it, whether it's in a photo or a video, um, everything down from the bike to what you're wearing to how you look on your bike, all of it is, is important. And that's like, I feel like the true um, art form in it to make it look good. So, And from there to continue just to bubble it up. You know, like for me personally, it was like creating film creating videos, that was something I was extremely, extremely passionate about. You know, um, it went from like just doing like a video part to now how do we make short films and, and like tell these short stories and bring the entire lifestyle um, into it. You know, from the bicycle to the music, to, to the fashion, the art, to travel, to all the things that are important to me. I want to add to that is, you know, the riding and the bikes and the tricks were obviously part, that was exciting, but that whole look, that feel, the colors, the whole kit, whatever you wore, whatever your, your gear was, your goggles, your glasses, your hat, I mean, all of that stuff was, that was important. It was all, 
it was kind of by design. You know, we, you wanted that, that package, you know, so it made it iconic, too. I think even if you fast forward to today, the look, and, and Nigel's got that same effect with what he's doing today. I feel like, I feel like the, my generation, we had that with our style, too, so. And on the other side of that, you guys both also have very sort of entrepreneurial approaches to the sport and to BMX. I know, Bob, you started uh, Haro when you were 18. Nigel, you've been doing your videos for a while now, and it kind of propelled you to the forefront of the sport and became something bigger than just the sport, too. You have all these artists in your videos, and you're kind of showing people cities and culture and all this. So tell me a bit about how you bring uh, yeah, entrepreneurial ideas to what you guys do as well. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> Basically, talk to me about the business side of, of the sports that you guys have been involved in. How do, we bring the, how do we bring the ideas of... How do you bring entrepreneurial ideas to oh. a sport that is so creative? Sorry, so. I started daydreaming there for a second. Jerry Springer? No, no, no. no. That's, that's a funny story. No, <laughs> that's a funny story there. Um, the entrepreneurial side, I, you know, I think... I think it's just, uh, it just kind of happens. It just all kind of flows with what you're doing, you know? And I mean, if I, when I go back in my head about when I was riding and through my late teens and 20s and stuff like that, I mean, you're so immersed in it. That's all you do. You know, you, you, you ride your bike all the time. I worked at a magazine. I'm illustrating for the magazine, others, Oakley, you know, again, we're here for Oakley, but, uh, you know, you're just so deep into it, you know, it's just, that's all you do, you eat, you live it, you ride every day, you're with your friends, so it's just, you know, in your head, this stuff's just spinning in your head, and creatively, you know, it just kind of comes out of you, you know, and I think the entrepreneurial side is, you know, um, you know, the opportunity to maybe make a, a business out of, out of your passion. So you have good ideas, you're on the, you're the tip of the spear because of what you're doing uh, with your uh, writing skills, and then you um, merge your creative skills, and then you come up with something. You come up with a product, or, you know, I have, I'm thankful to say that, you know, in the sport of freestyle BMX, I happen to be, I happen to be that guy that packaged freestyle BMX and, and took it around the world in the beginning, you know, and, uh, and it stuck. So I feel pretty honored and thankful for that opportunity, so. Um, for me personally, uh, I grew up in a household of, of like hard workers, you know, and watching like my mom and my brother and my dad just hustle and figure it out, you know, and make something out of nothing. So I took the same approach with BMX, trying to make something out of like the bicycle. And once I got sponsored and started to understand like the business side of it, that was something that was very attractive to me as well. Um, it's like, cool, I can ride my bike and get a whole bunch of free bicycles and shoes and parts, and that's great and all, but how do I actually like make a business out of it that I can now create new resources to do other things, to bring other ideas to life? Um, so that's something that was always important to me. Um, how do I continue like, to make it bigger and create opportunities for not just myself, but for those around me as well? Could you ever imagine how big the Go series has become? I mean, it's like it's, it's, it's crazy how huge it is. No, yeah. <laughs> at first, I didn't I didn't know at all. It was one of those random ideas, um, and like my curiosity led me to figuring out how to like put that um, that first New York video together. I had a great team around me, and um, we had we didn't have much expectations for it. We just wanted to put out this 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 film that we felt very um, passionate and confident in. And it took off like wildfire, man. And like, thank, thankful for like, the internet and the internet doing what it does and social media was able to share with people around the world. And um, it created an access point for people who may not necessarily know what BMX is, but to watch that, to like watch that film and be like, cool, there's other things in here that I'm into that I can now get into it and have an access point. So that was super cool. And then to see how far it has come now, you know, we've made it like, halfway around the world and the idea of riding my bicycle around the world is something super attractive to me and I think using, again, like using all those, um, those things I've learned throughout my career throughout riding BMX bikes um, on like the creative side and the business side, they'll put all those things into the Ghost Series and it is what it is now.
Do you have any like funny or unusual stories you can share from those videos? Like, did you get permits for every everything, or you just like went for it, right? <laughs> permits? <laughs> nah. Um, I mean, like, I, 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 at this point, the series has grown so much that yeah, we have to kind of follow a little bit more rules. But in the beginning, it was very run and gun. You know, we still keep a very small crew. Um, try to stay as stealth as possible to, to get like some of the shots done. But each time we like create. One of those, uh, one of those, like one of the Go films, man. We create new friendships. There's so many memories as far as like being in that city for two or three weeks, like trying to get that film done. Um, it's a bit of a process from like the pre-production of it that takes you like a month. Then we're in that city, like I said, for two or three weeks, and then the pro, and then like the um, the post-production takes about three weeks. So it's the full process, man. But um, I've learned so much about myself, so much about the world, so much about people, um, which is I'm extremely thankful for. Cool, and I want to move the conversation a bit more towards products. So we're here for the yeah, Oakley City of Origins, all about Oakley products. And I want to ask you guys a bit about the relationship between product and sport. Does the sport evolve because of the product? Does the product evolve because the athletes demand it uh, in the sports? Is it like a symbiotic thing? It happens at the same time. Can you guys share your thoughts on that? So I think, you know, in, in, um, because I had my own brand, and uh, with horror bikes, you know, it's, it was designing things that I felt like we needed for the bikes and what they needed to do or, or have. And um, the sport also pushed things, it evolved, you know, different styles of riding, that whether it was having pegs or having, you know, bash guards or, you know, other little, you know, things like that, double top tubes on the early bikes and, and all of this. I think that the tricks evolved and so therefore the bikes kind of evolved as well. And um, so we try to fit a need, you know, uh, as you said, symbiotically of, of what a rider wanted and then what we could do and create for that rider. So I know post my riding career, you know, my focus was purely on product design. So I would sit, whether it was you know, working with guys like Matt Hoffman and others on the team, um, talking to them about what they wanted, whether it was different geometries or, you know, uh, more reinforcement on the bike or narrower this or that so they have more room when they do all their tricks and stuff like that. So, yeah, it was definitely product, innova you know, innovation through need. What was the question again? Uh, the relationship between product and sport, like if one evolves before the other, or if it's at the same time. For sure, um, I think it goes to your point. I think I think definitely a lot of it starts with the riders, the athletes, wanting certain modifications to like to their bikes to accommodate the progression of their tricks. I think sometimes as well, it's like a product is made out of curiosity, and then like the riders adapt it and find a new ways to like use that product. Um, um, and yeah, so alongside surfing and skating in the Tokyo Olympics, BMX Freestyle will make its debut. Uh, I want to ask you guys how you feel about that. I mean, Bob, it must be kind of crazy 40 years on seeing it on such a huge stage and Nigel, what it means for you after, you know, having been a professional athlete for so long as well. For sure. I think it's dope. I think um, having um, Freestyle BMX on a platform such as the Olympics, like the World Games is super important just for the visibility of BMX for those riders as well. You know, it gives them a great opportunity. I think it's, uh, I think it's really amazing that it's taken this long. You know what I mean? Um, I know I worked on uh, 2008 when uh, BMX was in the Olympics, you know, and uh, that, was, that was a milestone that was really, you know, really exciting. And uh, I think that it's incredible that Freestyle BMX now has its moment in Olympic history uh, to be recognized as a, as a, you know, a global sport, you know, and um, I, think it'll be I think it'll be great for the sport. I think, again, more visibility of the sport, these athletes, um, how cool it is, you know, I mean, it's pretty incredible. Um, so, no, I just think nothing but blue sky. It's going to be great. Do you have any thoughts about why it took so long to be integrated into the Olympics? I don't know why it took so long, because I'm not into the politics side of, uh, of what the Olympics are all about. But uh, I would have to say that, you know, maybe it just cumulative energy around the world and recognition that, you know, the Olympic Committee finally recognized that this sport was legit, had momentum, 
has, uh, has a fan base and uh, passionate participants all around the world, you know, maybe that, that gives it enough um, credibility or something like that. But um, I don't know, we'll see. We're all gonna see here real soon. And uh, last question before we take questions from the audience here. Really open-ended one, so feel free to answer it however you want. But what does the future of the sport look like to you guys? And also feel free to talk about like individually what your future you think looks like. I know like Nigel upstairs, you were talking about starting your brand, for instance, something like that. Share whatever kind of thoughts you have. You want to go first? No, you got the mic later. <laughs> <laughs> so what does the future of the sport look like? Uh, well, I think this future of the sport is what's going what we're going to see happen in Tokyo here. You know, um, you know, again, I always trip out on, at least in freestyle BMX, you know, you see what the guys are doing today or the riders are doing today, and then someone throws down some, some crazy new tricks and things like that. It just is incredible to me in 40 years, the evolution of the sport of where it started and where it is today and the, and the, the level of uh, skills and athleticism, um, so I don't know, I think, I think that, you know, BMX and freestyle BMX is definitely here to stay. I think if it was a flash in the pan, again, to go back to my generation, I think it would have been done by now, you know, but it's not. I mean, it's still, it's still super exciting, it's still super relevant, you know, it's, it, like we said, it's in the Olympics, you know, Nigel's doing his awesome videos and creating new excitement and energy for the sport. And um, yeah, I love what he's doing from the standpoint. Obviously, there's the riding skills. That's, that's a big part of it. But I love all the artistic part of what he's doing. And then he's integrating you know, other athletes and celebrities and experiences. I mean, it's, it makes my head spin. I'm like trying to think, well, wow, how could I even do that? But uh, it's super cool. I think it crosses and opens up um, new people to be exposed to the sport. So. Nothing but good things. For sure. Um, thank you. It means, it means a lot coming from you, bro. I really appreciate that. Um, as far as the future of sport, man, um, like Bob said, if it was a flash in the pan, it would be dead already, but it's not. You know, it's, it's still going, and it's still, like, breaking down walls every single day. The fact that it's in the Olympics now, as far as, like, the freestyle side of it, um, is super important just on the exposure side and to bring more people into the world of, of BMX. So and definitely having the internet and like social media and, and riders having platforms to be able to um, share their like visions and their stories, it could only go up from here. You know, um, as a person, I just feel it's gonna continue to grow. It may be a, a slow grind, but it's gonna continue to, to grow. And I hope to be part of that, of that growth by just doing my part and continue to push on, on every front that I possibly can. Actually, I did have one more question before we turn to the audience from something we were talking about upstairs. Um, I thought it was too funny for you to not share, so I wanted to ask, um, how come, how did you end up uh, going into BMX instead of skating? Can you tell that story? <laughs> no, nah, for sure. Um, so like I said, I've been growing, I grew up in my hood, like riding bicycles, and then um, I, when, once I got into BMX, and I, I discovered skateboarding as well. I was like, let me try it, and tried it one day, it was skating around. I didn't like how my feet felt on the board. It was like vibrating really, really weird. I probably had a really shitty ass skateboard. <laughs> and after that day, I was like, you know what? I'm good. Like I have appreciation for the sport and you know a bunch of skaters and it's dope, but BMX is just, it's in my heart, you know what I mean? All right, well, yeah, we'll turn it to the audience now. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to raise your hand and say them, and then I'll repeat them for the viewers at home and so they can hear as well. Uh, so the question is, if anyone in particular inspired you guys in sports or in your life in general, if you can talk about that. For sure. So, um, I mean, I draw inspiration from everywhere. Um, family, um, music, certain athletes. You know, like there, there's a time in my career where I would just watch Michael Jordan clips on YouTube just to get hyped up before I went to go ride. You know, um, so just kind of from everywhere, man. Whatever I, like, feels right to me, whatever I can truly connect with and um, channel that into my riding. I think for me, you know, in, I was inspired, again, grew up in San Diego, uh, motocross was big, again, this is 70s, motocross was really big, fields were everywhere, and, uh, you know, I wanted to be a pro motocross racer, but didn't have enough money to do it and ride, uh, race competitively, so those were kind of early heroes, you know, again, 
back then before the internet and as we have today, you know, you went to you went to the supermarket or the newsstand and you pick up magazines, whether it was skateboard magazines or BMX, not BM, well, BMX later, but motorcycle magazines and things like that. So, you know, when you look at a page and you see, you know, somebody you idolized and doing this amazing jump or whatever, I mean, those were kind of early heroes for me. But then I had heroes on the other side too. I mean, I was uh, art artistically, you know, I, I was into, uh, there was a magazine called Mad Magazine growing up. And I loved, I just love the art. I love the, the satire. You know, I'm a bit of a smart ass. And so that, I, I learned to illustrate through that in these different various artists that I would uh, try to emulate and then until I figured out my own style. So it's kind of, there's an athletic side and a creative side. Uh, any other questions from the audience? Yeah, we have one question in the back. What's next for you guys? So the question is, what is next for you guys? What's next? Um, what's next? Uh, there's, a, there's a few things I'm cooking up right now, but I can't really share yet. But, Are you guys uh, going to the Olympics? No, I just, you know what? I'm, I'm kind of, as I was telling Nigel upstairs, is, you know, I'm, I'm a creative guy. I like to stay hungry. I like to work on new things. I like to, you know, keep stretching and trying to reinvent myself and things like that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm thankful with my career. I'm humbled with, you know, the things that have happened and, you know, being pivotal in a sport like freestyle, starting my own brand that's still relevant today. You know, I have an opportunity to sit before you guys and talk about and share a story. But... I just feel like there's so much more to do. You know, I, I, you know, I get up every day, I'm fired up. You know, my job is design and creative. It's not a boring job, I like it, it's fun, you know? And um, I, write, I make music for fun, that's another passion I have. I've been writing music for years. So it's just keep stretching yourself, you know? But yeah, there's new things to share soon, but not today. <laughs> um. So I'm similar to Bob, where I'm just naturally a curious and creative kid, man. I want to continue to push, and if I have an idea, it's like, how do I bring it to life by any means? You know, um, recently joined the Oakley family, so we have some cool stuff coming up with them, so that's, I'm really excited about that. Um, as well as, we have another Go film going to release uh, spring 2020. Can't let you know where it's going to be yet, but it's definitely going to happen. So I'm ex excited about that as well. Um, and you know, like we always have things going on, but I'm a huge fan of the element of surprise. So I'd much rather just let you guys um, see it <laughs> when it's ready. Can you give us any hints, like which continent or hemisphere or something like that? Every hemisphere, man, <laughs> from, from film to, to products to events, all of it. Uh, any other questions then from the audience? For sure. So the question is, um, what is sort of the relationship with Oakley like? Like, what are you, how, how are they supportive? How are you guys working with them? Yeah, so um, it's interesting, man. Like, we went to the headquarters yesterday, and I was entirely, I'm completely blown away. Um, didn't know there was so much technology and thought and effort and care that goes into, like, making the product. You know, i just never been there before, so I didn't know. But when I got there, I was, like, super impressed, man. And it definitely inspired me to start thinking, like, okay, there's certain things we can do together. Um, just even telling that story about, like, the love and care that goes into the product, comparing that to the love and care that goes into some of the things that I'm, I'm creating and making. Um, so I know for sure, like, as we continue to build and move forward, that uh, we'll take that, like, that, like, level of care and put into whatever it is like, that we're doing. I think for me, you know, Oakley is, it was a really important brand for me as a kid. Again, growing up as a, as a young guy in his teens, family didn't have a lot of money, and um, being a moto guy and then a BMX kid, um, Oakley was one of those brands that, you know, you wanted to rock that logo. It just, it was like, it was, had a lot of status as a kid. And I remember as a BMX rider, you know, and then eventually getting sponsored by Oakley, um, 
You know, I have a lot of pride and affection in the brand because I feel like I've, you know, been a part of the family and was friends with Jim Gennard who started the brand. You know, he, he was older than me. I was a kid working at BMX Action Magazine in the back of the warehouse doing cartoons and illustrations. And I started doing some work for Gennard back then in, in Oakley and, and did some early work for the brand. So, you know, I just have a lot of affection, a lot of respect. You know, I saw Jim last year, you know, with his new project with Red Camera, not too far from here. And, you know, you talk about heroes and mentors, and Jim was one of those guys. He's an absolutely incredibly successful um, guy with his company, with Oakley. And, uh, you know, it, it feels like I've, have, I've got a part of it in me and uh, a lot of affection for the brand, a lot of pride for the brand. I'm super proud of my friend that started the brand. He turned, you know, this thing into a, the size that it is and globally and well-known. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it means a lot just to, just to be here, to be part of this deal and to, to share those ideas. Any other questions then? Okay, last one then, yeah. Go ahead. Try to uh, make that uh, a little shorter. Uh, the question is, when did you come up with one of your, I guess, iconic innovations, the number plate? So the number plate for BMX bikes, you know, it became this signature product because it was functional and it was stylish, you know, and it was, the number plate was a really kind of an expressionistic piece on a kid's BMX bike. And, uh, to Dom's question, you know, how did it come about and, and all of that, I mean, I was living at home with my parents and I had my dirt bike, my motorcycle in the garage. I had, we used to make number plates for our dirt bikes. I had extra plastic, I had my BMX bike. And uh, my sister's boyfriend and I used to ride together all the time and we were going to the races and I said, oh, we should make some cool number plates for our bikes. And I cut out, a, cut out some shapes. I made one that's the classic lightning bolt plate that many people in the sport know about. And then I made him a square one. And we just made them for fun. And I had used contact paper that my mom had at the house, like shelving paper, and I put, made graphics on it. And we went to the races, and they were a hit. All the kids were like, like what is this? This is awesome, you know? And from that little idea and making a couple pieces and then going to the races, you know, I had people, they wanted to buy them. And all of a sudden, this little business was born. So, and the capitalist that I am, and I didn't have a lot of money, I'm like, hey, I can make some money at this deal. So, so that's kind of where the product came about. So it was really just, it was uh, an accident that turned into something. All right, well, thanks everyone so much for coming out. Thanks a lot to Bob and Nigel for being here. Um, we're here at Oakley City of Origins. It runs through Sunday, so if you're in the LA area, make sure to come on down, and we'll see you then.